For 170 years, Taskers were a leading manufacturer of a wide range of agricultural equipment and machinery, steam and stationary engines and road vehicles. The story began near Andover in the early years of the 19th century, when Robert Tasker and his brother William began what was now to become known as the Waterloo Ironworks. These photographs I've taken were from Milestones Museum in Basingstoke, which is where a lot of the equipment and machinery from Taskers ended up when it was eventually sold in the late 1990s. George Fowle also joined the brothers at a later date, and he was actually related to Robert Tasker's wife, Martha. So when Robert Tasker retired, George Powell became a partner in the company, together with William. Ironwork produced by the Waterloo Ironworks from 1843 onwards. It's clear that the capacity of the foundry and the skill of the moulders both increased during the Tasker and Fowler regime. The most notable evidence of this is the supply by the cast iron bridges which were built by the firm. This bridge crosses the Anton at Upper Clatford, close to the junction with Norman Court Lane. Very decorative. And this one is the iron bridge, which is the opposite end of Andover. Um, there is the Mission Ever Road, and that goes a ladies' walk. Um, along the footpath in the past, across the original main road through Andover. As you can see, they are fairly similar in design. Um, but this is a wider one, but apart from that, the ironwork is very, very similar. This has the uh, plate on it, Tarts from the Fowl, 1861. And this is a reconstruction of the works office where the brothers would have done the design work. Imagine Robert and William Tasker sitting in there, busy working on paperwork and diagrams. All this faithfully recreated at, at milestones in date basis that were used for breaking up uh, blocks of linseed cake, which used to come in slabs. In the early years, Taskers didn't make their own steam engines. They did sell them, they were supplied by another company. And it wasn't until 1865 that they produced their famous Little Giant which would be very popular as a smaller engine, so it was, it was self-driven. In addition, it could also drive other, other machinery. Whereas the stationary engine could only drive other machines, not themselves. They had to be towed around by a horse. You've seen the specialised in road rollers quite a lot. The machine lay is there for obviously for machining a shaft or anything that needed careful attention. There's another stationary engine which would be used to drive other, other machines via flat belts. This group of men were pattern makers. Um, I'm not quite sure that involved very technical, highly experts in their own field. more reconstructed um, works. Different departments.
He's been with Boilermakers. Another very, very important job. Church spread was a very commonly used piece of equipment by many farmers and it originated in, in that's a prototype, this one, in 1960. But I was using them in 1963, right up to ooh, the 70s, into the 70s, on two different farms, and often used to come back to the taskers for parts. Not that they many, needed many parts because they were very simple, but a very accurate machine. And that's a more modern version. So well, like the one I use had extension sides and would carry, I think it was 30, 300 weight, 3,500 weight of granular. granular. That number is not the year of manufacture, it's actually the series number. All the machines were, were, in, were numbered um, as they were built. The machines were very smart, uh, very tidy, compact, but they did the job. Um, about 10 horsepower, the little giant. There's a, obviously a, one that's been taken apart so people can see inside. Small parts, parts there of, a, of, a, of an engine. If we get some milestones in Basin so it's well worth a visit to have a look at all the equipment we've got, not just Taskers, but many, many other local companies represented there. By this time, the name had changed once again to W. Tasker & Sons Limited. Most of these engines developed about 8 horsepower. Perhaps not very much for today's standards, but they could pull a, a lot of equipment. This is a winnowing machine, which is usually hand operated to, for sorting out and, and grading small seeds such as kale, um, linseed, anything which required very gentle handling, done with a with a um, blast of wind from the fan, and, and there you are. And then this, I've introduced this is a company called Scats, a very very common years ago. In, uh, around the Winchester and Romsey and over area. They had their own wagons. I remember them very well being based in, in Romsey. More recently, Scats have been taken over by Mole Valley, uh, which is um, they're based more to the west. So Scats are no longer here, unfortunately. But Tasker has made a lot of road rollers. That's a pretty popular a lot of roads to be made up at those days, so I, I guess that was a, a useful thing to have. Um, Watson Haig, Limited of Andover, that was another company that were very, uh, folded up in the, in the 90s, but they were very well known, supplied spark parts and machines, combines, tractors. So, most people in Andover knew what's in the Hague. My iron works in Andover, where we make engines that do all sorts of things. We make trench engines that help farmers run farm machinery. You'll see our most successful trench engine, the Little Giant, on your visit today. We also make steam rollers that help build and repair roads. Steam 
Setups and milestones of the staff. It's called uh, Roadrunner. Uh, we watched the head name on it, Roadrunner, um, made in 1926. I'm in Anna Valley now with Taskers. Taskers had their Waterloo Ironworks. Just opposite me now is the entrance to Clatford Lodge. There's quite a history to it. Well, here is the school. I think Robert Tasker lived up there somewhere too. The yeah, only bit that hasn't changed for the rest of the old works is no housing estate just to the, my left. Yeah, there we are, it's like on the wall. At the entrance of the way of the, to the house is own. <laughs> On the left is a dwelling place for a schoolmistress and her husband over the arch. Written by the Reverend Richard Kill, the mill. 1836. That place was the village shop and post office. All that remains now is the post box. And that's oh, just behind it is where Andover Garden Garden Andover Garden Centre began. And I was involved with that. Just cross over and have a look at the back. The Sandown Garden Centre began here, right in the area behind this tall fence, you know, full of houses, as everything else is. And you can walk down to the back of the shop where the tills were. I helped build it. The man I worked for, a farmer, uh, he put the money up for it. And this is where it all began. And it flourished here for several years. And then we moved it out of here, turned left, out the main road, towards down there, but not very far. Up to. I passed this place many, many times, I actually went in the task to get parts. I can't quite place where the entrance was, it was somewhere here. And I had a crib in here opposite me, or it could have been just a little further left. It's certainly in this area. Up there is a road called Tasker's Drive, which goes around the estate. That place over there, just what is above the door, says Waterloo Workman's Hall, and that was part of, of the Tasker's Works. So, possible that the entrance was here. There's Tasker's Drive. Uh, things change when you do the All the machinery lined up outside the works on Foundry Road, I imagine. Built over, everything changes. It's, really, it's just loops around, loops around the estate and at the other end. Interesting though, interesting to see that place there. Back to that man there. He worked. He worked at Taskers for ten years. His father worked there for thirty years before him, and he reckons the entrance was more or less the Taskers' driveway. That's, that's where the entrance was. But the work extended right up beyond that to where where he's walking now. There's a tree there, a fir tree on the end, 
the wall, went from there, right around to where I was looking at the entrance to, to Clatford Lodge. So what a huge place. There's also a river, a stream, which joins the mountain, called the Pill Hill Brook. Apparently that ran underneath the uh, part of the works, um, beneath the floor. Uh, so that was it. That's that entrance to Clapford Lodge. There's another entrance further in on the main road too. But apparently Robert Tasker lived up there somewhere in the house. Don't say that's gone there. They first installed this water wheel, which worked off just two feet ahead of water. And then later it was a turbine. Same same thing, two feet, two foot head of water. And this is the aforementioned Pill Hill Brook. There's quite a lot of water there because it's been so wet lately. This is the one that ran out underneath Tasker's. It's now come slightly south, I suppose, of, of Tasker's area. We'll join the Anton later on. I'm not sure where that stand, that, that staging is. There's some kids to jump off of. I'm just wondering if the task is, it did indeed have a railway siding. How did they get out to their works? I don't think it ran up to the work, it can't have done, it's not enough space for it. So it could have come out here. That would go down towards the siding, or well, where the siding I think was. Presumably the siding would have carried coal and such like in in for their furnaces. That's just the area called the green. Uh, up Clatford. Berry Hill Farm, or farmhouse there. I remember when we first moved to the area in, I think it was 69, we used to come in there and get our potatoes. I'm not sure whether we grew them or whether we got them for somewhere else, but we used to certainly sell them in, in half hundred sacks. on the right, pretty shot, right, for Molly's. That closed down quite a long time ago now. The old property up there. Called Berwick House Road, Watery Lane. This is, would have gone down over the canal and the railway one time. Another house is called Redbridge House. It could be significant to the Redbridge and off and over railway. Anyway, the bridge and canal and railway must have been around here somewhere. So let's see if I can track or find where the picture were. I found it when they were taking the track up, lifting it. And uh, it says that the, the siding diversion where that guard van is up the top, I, I marked the blue line, which kind of looks about right. There the far distance is the River Anton, and all close to me could be the Pill Hill Brook. Um, just where the canal was, I don't know. Could have used the Anton or the Pill Hill Brook. 
for a while. And I can't go much further than it when some boots on. I do it's called Watery Lane. I've never seen water flowing across there before. I just know just where this railway came through. So long ago, it takes up in 65, 66. Well, they were taking it up further down in 69. I think it's getting it close to 65. There's a fine machinery out there in the middle of that water. It's not walking through that, are you? Boots on, no, yeah, it's just it's a passing traffic you get you. Oh wash. Well stand in that anywhere near that is absolutely drowned. Who then? It's the railway fence post. Sorry, did the railway come up here? Maybe it did. It's supposed to be bridge, bridge would be on that corner. And then it would have gone along here. There's another railway post over that side on the right. This I guess was the line. Yes, every rally post there. Hold on in. Well, according to what I saw, the picture I've seen, which I'll put on, on the screen, the siding went off from point here somewhere, off the left, and off the up line. Could be a bit of an embankment or cutting edge of the railway, perhaps there on that bank. This follows the line, the old line right back in Landover. There's a fence line over on the left there. It's very wide here too, there could well have been a siding in this area. I'm not sure how they got the materials out to the road though. Though we're not far from Tasker's works as we stand, as, as the crow flies. It's just a river in between. And there's an old bunker there. That gives it away. This is definitely on the line of the railway. It's the siding I was looking for, and I don't know where. I'm, I'm guessing it's in this area somewhere. Out that, looking at the map, sitting from the bridge, it was. It's about here. It may have just been a siding on the side of the track for, for the Tasker's wagons. It was a private siding for them, their use only. So we say this is a railway bridge. I think the brick work blue, blue bricks. It's a 
Go, she did it. Because you get with that. I don't know. I can give access from this side across the bridge, I guess. And maybe across the railway. Who knows? If you're up at task, we're a non conformist. And uh, up in, in Ando Ring Street is the United Reformed Church. On the wall, next to it on the right, is a couple of. Well, yeah, a couple of gravestones, tombstones, a memorial. One on the right says it's Martha, her wife of Robert Tasker. No, I think they make it Joseph on that. I think it was a Joseph Tasker. Anyway, thank you for watching. Bit of a model. <laughs> Bit of a mix up, but then why we got there in the end.